pretty happy with this as far as mulligans go. Oh. Jensen going to fire off a ponder. Hit one, two, and three as our quarterfinals are underway here. And of course, when we do get results of what's happened in other matches, we will certainly let you guys know as the ponder does resolve. Jensen going to keep it. Pass the turn back. Tombstalker off the top. Here's a Deathrite Shaman coming in to play off a of bayou for Ulanov. And keep in mind that Jensen has two copies of main deck misdirection, so him to Torak could potentially backfire in a, a very bad way. Mm -hmm. Ponder off of Volcanic Island. You see him using the non-basic there so the wasteland doesn't happen. Going to quickly shuffle off the Ponder, so not happy with what he found off the top three. Looking for something specific. We don't quite know what, but a very fast shuffle. Yes. And Ulanov with his turn one death rate, but yet no fetch land in either graveyard, so... Uh, Jensen's either going to have to draw one here, or wait on Jensen to provide one. Mystery card coming. Let's see if he's got any more manipulation here. <laughs> and Jensen basically debating between passing the turn, possibly another ponder. Could see a lotus petal here too, something of that nature. Preordain, uh, another, another ponder. ponder. So one, two, three. Force of will among those cards. Doesn't look thrilled with them. He made a face. Yeah. Quick shuffle. And the more and more that I watch, you know, quality players play Legacy, like William Jensen, the more and more I see them shuffle with their ponders. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of average quality players where the n amount of times they shuffle with their ponder is extremely low. And then as you see players ramp up in skill level, you see the percentage that they're shuffling become much higher. Ponder going to resolve. Three Ponders resolve so far this game for Jensen. He is going to play Lotus Petal and just pass the turn back, so we're not going to get to draw a card. Does he draw a fetch land? No, but he does draw a second land in Underground Sea, so not so bad. Got a little something to work with here. Does he add Tarmogoyf and try to get some pressure to the board, or does he cast his... Does he have a him in hand? Or he has Abrupt Decay, rather. He has Abrupt Decay, so he could fire off on that pedal, which would be interesting, to say the least. Okay. The Abrupt Decay is going to struggle to do too much more than, than that. There's not nothing in the way of low-cost low permanence in Jensen's deck. Mm -hmm. So Ulanov is certainly going to take his time trying to figure out what he wants to do. I think he does want to get to the board here and just... Yeah, I don't really like to use the term hope, but hope that that force will removing Delver Secrets will be good enough for the time being. Yep. There is a real, I, I think the Abrupt Decay versus Tarmogoyf play is a, a real consideration here. Yeah. And Jensen has pondered a couple of times, though, so he like, leads you to believe that he probably does have some mana. He's seen so many cards, so if that's what he was searching for, he would have been able to keep it if he wanted to. I think that I like casting Abrupt Decay here more than casting Tarmogoyf. Yeah? He's going to have the Goyf, but... There's not a lot of Abrupt Decay targets either. So Death Rite Shaman's going to come across here for one after Tarmogoyf comes into play. We'll get the Tarmogoyf die out there for you guys. Currently sitting at a 1 2 just because Sorcerer's Negative. There are no lands. The Lotus Petal will probably go in the graveyard at some point. There's an Ancient Tomb, and Jensen just passes the turn back. Okay. So there's Tarmogoyf sitting at a 1 2. Now, looking over Jensen's deck list, I know you do have it in front of you. Any intuitions hiding throughout there? There are no copies of intuition. Wow, okay. Basically, what he's representing right now is like a hard cast force of will, maybe a hard cast misdirection. Mm -hmm. Misdirection would also be pretty juicy here if, if Ulnaz plays Abrupt Decay. Mm -hmm. oh, tough guy Tarmogoyf coming to the red zone. Attack for one. Just pass the turn back. So has Abrupt Decay at the ready. Jensen has drawn Sneak Attack, so we'll see if that's the last piece of the puzzle that Jensen was missing here. Could be time to go to battle. Jensen asks Ulanov, how many cards do you have in your hand? Ulanov, I believe, says five. And of course, we know there's a Force of Will. There's a Delver of Secret hiding out over there. Another copy of Death Right Shaman, Abrupt Decay, and a Tomb Stalker in the grip. Ancient Tomb comes down. Jensen going to take four from his lands. And there is a Sneak Attack with a colorless mana floating. Well, this isn't too much of a decision from Ulanov's perspective, mm -hmm. it is. Have to cast the Force of Will here, that's for sure. Force of Will, removing that Delver of Secrets. Jensen going to add some mana. Says, can I spell pierce this? Again, still a mana floating in his pool. 
Feels like we might see a daze here. Yep. Mm -hmm. No death by shaman activation, no fetch line in the graveyard. So spell pierce plus daze are going to take care of that force of will. And conveniently has a lotus petal left over for red mana. So it looks like after the dust settles, Ulanov might be taking a, a big blow here. Yep, and he is going to sacrifice that Lotus Petal. So Tarmogoyf is going to grow, but it's going to die. <laughs> Don't bother moving that Tarmogoyf yeah. die. That's okay. So one, two, three, and four. And Ulanov is going to concede the game. So William Huey Jensen does win game number one over Dennis Ulanov. Sneak and show up a game over Bug Delver. And as these players go to the sideboard, we're going to bring it back to the booth because we'll get to their sideboards in just a second. But it is trivia time, my friends. And as we do begin here, I'll quickly explain the rules for you if you guys have never played. And Patrick will be asking the first question of the evening. Uh, very briefly, uh, get your Twitters open because the hashtag of SCG Premium is what you're going to need. Patrick's going to ask you guys a question. You will send your answer with the hashtag of SCG Premium on Twitter. And again, we will draw the winner at the conclusion of the quarterfinals. It is about accuracy, not speed, so not a big rush. Just make sure that you get the answer correct because we announce the winner at the conclusion of the quarterfinal round. Patrick, the question. So, one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic card in Legacy is Force of Will. Yeah. Four copies, industry standard, and decks ranging from tempo to control to combo decks. Jensen is playing... Sort of a force of will numbers five and six that matches up particularly well against the card Hymn to Torrak. So what is that card? Uh, again, tweet your answer at SCG Live and hashtag SCG Premium for your chance to win three free months of StarCityGames.com premium content. All right, we'll take a look at the sideboards now. Um, we'll start with Ulanov's sideboard here, uh, which you certainly do have in front of you. Uh, I the, uh, do. the Team America player, what can you do to kind of turn things around here for himself? Well, he has access to a Diabolic Edict. He has access to a Vendillion Click and two copies of Spell Pierce. So okay. those are four pretty easy adds in my mind. And then he has access to some very fairly narrow enchantment removal between Golgari Charm and Crow's Angram. I don't know if he necessarily wants to go that deep, but the sneak and tech, the sneak and show deck, in my opinion, it doesn't really have a ton of red mana, and Dennis is capable of taxing that with his copies of Wasteland. So often the sneak and show player has to cast show and tell, a uh, sneak attack rather, and then kind of hope it gets to the next turn with red mana. Sure. So there's an argument for bringing in disenchant effects against the deck, particularly when you have other ways of taxing the red mana. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Ulanov go to some of his enchantment removal as well. You see Jensen's sideboard on the screen. Blood Moon times three. Leyline of Sanctity times three as well. Two Echoing Truth, two Jace the Mind Sculptor, two Pyroclasm, two Through the Breach, and a Red Elemental Blast. Again, these players are working with perfect information as far as deck lists are concerned because those are given to the players at this point. I like Blood Moon. I do. No basics over there. Blood Moon is game over. If it I can mean. get in, yeah. <laughs> if it gets in and there's no Abrupt Decay, flo mana floating Abrupt Decay, it's sort of our deal. Uh, it'll likely be game over. Lena, I think that he also kind of interesting here. Um, with how much discard Ulanov has in his deck, those hymns, no actual thoughts he uses in the main deck. Um, and there's like a, I'm checking the, s the sideboard really quickly here. I don't know. Do you like Leyline? No, I, I only really like Leyline against decks that are ice cold to it. All discard decks, decks like Mono Red Burn, it's excellent there. I'm not that big of a fan of bringing in against decks that have a mixture of disruption. Okay. Ones with hand dis hand disruption and counter spells, because the stars just have to align in a really specific way for for Leyline to shut down all of your opponent's sure. action. I would much rather go with a plan like Jace if I was in Jensen's position. It's not like Ulanov's deck applies a bunch of pressure. He doesn't have a ton of creatures. Uh, that's what prevented Jensen from bringing in Jace against the Death and Taxes match that we had on camera. Ulanov not really going to be threatening him in the, in the same way. And if Ulanov's plan involves kind of just trying to wear down his resources, Jace is incredible in those kind of games. Additionally, one of Dennis's best threats is Tombstalker, which Jace is especially good against because unsummoning a Tombstalker uh, is often just as good as killing it. Yeah. Pyroclasm kind of an interesting one too because that'll take care of Deathrite Shaman and that'll take care of uh, Delver of Secrets that gets flipped into an Insectile Aberration. You know, if the pressure's on, you, you know, I've got two copies. I could see that coming in. Yeah, I, I you know, uh, for me, a card like Pyroclasm is right on the fence. Jensen has five cards I would much rather have in this matchup in Jace and Blood Moon. And bringing in the sixth and seventh card is a very large cost in my mind when you're talking about a linear combo deck because he can only dilute his deck so much and still do what his deck's core competency is. Mm -hmm. That said, Jace allows you to play 
more of a normalized game plan. So uh, I can see a, a, an argument for going up to the 6th and 7th sideboard card when you have Jace, uh, but you are reaching this tipping point of having too many cards to bring in and not enough cards to take out. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, both players really, really going to the sideboard. You see Jensen really taking a long time deciding out how he wants to go about sideboarding. He wants to make sure he does get it all right here. does have access to the deck list again. So he puts the 15 away. Yep. And he's going to start shuffling up for game number two. And again, as the results do come in, we'll be able to let you guys know exactly uh, what's going on on the other side of the bracket. Again, Jason Abong versus Mark Aviza playing. Uh, that's Blue White Red Delver versus Esper Blade. That's your one versus eight. You've got Robert Wilkinson, Blue White Miracles against Ricky Sitter playing Rug Delver. And then Corey Armstrong, your seventh seed against Vidyanto Wajaya. The two seed, Maverick versus Jund. So, a diverse topic. Yeah, and I'm really interested to see Abijai's list with the main deck. True name Nemesis playing against a normal deck. He's, he's playing against Blue White Red Delver. Mm -hmm. He's not playing against a combo deck. What kind of edge does that card give him? Yeah, it's an e exquisite blocker against Guys Insane Trapped. It's an excellent target for equipment. And if that card's all the hype, some of which you know I'm responsible for, sure. is against normal decks, it should give him uh, quite a substantial edge against Jason's Blue White Red Delver deck. Yeah, I, that's one card I do want to see in action. I want to see if it's the the, the giant headache that we think it is once it does resolve. Yes. That's what I'm really interested to see. So, Yeah, uh, Jason DeBong has some outs. You know, he, he can get in the air with Delver of Secrets. He can win with equipment uh, through Stoneforge Mystic, but attacking on the ground is a, a fool's errand once True Name Nemesis is in play. All right, so game two will be underway shortly for you guys at home, and any you guys are just joining us, we do appreciate you. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, Star City Games Open Series here in Los Angeles. We've outlasted the Stan Lee Kamikaze. Kamikaze. Yes. Yeah, everyone's gone home except for us here at the Los Angeles Convention Center, so they're weak. We've outlasted the Lakers game going on next door, too. Yes, we have. Lakers did win, so for uh, all you Lakers fans <sighs> out there, yeah, <sighs> yeah, I don't like it either, honestly. <laughs> but the Hawks are just a miserable basketball team, so... Um, if you're an Atlanta Hawks fan, sorry, man. Well, I, I've seen the games on TV. There are no Atlanta Hawks fans. <laughs> yeah, they do not show up. All 74 of you yeah. out there, if any of you happen to be listening to the broadcast. To the ironically named Highlight Factory. We're, we're really sorry. Yeah. At SCG Live, hashtag SCGLA for your tweets. We'll be checking them for the duration of the evening as we do put a wrap on this show. Crown ourselves a legacy open champion. Again, our standard open champion, Benjamin Beatdowns himself, Ben Lundquist who will be writing an article on the Industry Standard this week about his Boros deck, how he came to the decisions that he did. And, of course, you can check out the coverage page where uh, where we saw Glenn sit down with him in the sideboard. And, and you know, Lundquist is really turning it on lately. Yeah. It, you know, sort of came out of nowhere when he started, you know, working at Stoneblade. There's enough Magic players in the office to sort of, you know, push push him into playing in some tournaments. Mm -hmm. and very quickly and easily rattles off an Invitational in Top 8 in Atlanta, a Grand Prix Top 8 in Oakland, and now a Standard Open win this weekend in Los Angeles. Oh, he can win some matches. Oh, yeah. He can win some matches. Quick update on the 2 versus 7 seed. Vidyanto Ajayi with Jun defeats Corey Armstrong with Maverick in Game 1. Okay. So they'll be sideboarding now again. That's our backup match. Hopefully we'll have time to cut over there. As both players are going to lay out their opening hands here. Six That's predicted. Eight. Jensen with very little trouble winning the first game. Yeah, not too much of a surprise, honestly, but this is where things change. And we'll see if he can fight through, you know, a lot of these singleton hate cards that uh, Ulanov has access to. Ulanov going to be on the play first here. Jensen taking a quick look at his hand, as is Ulanov. Ulanov really has none of the best hate cards. He has cards he can bring in to improve the deck, but he has no, no pithing needles, no uh, ways to blow out Jensen if he goes for show and tell uh, and so forth. Yeah. So... He, he's improving his deck a little bit on the margins, but he's not fundamentally changing much of what's going on. Uh-oh. Looks like we're moving in Ancient Tomb, Lotus Petal, Show and Tell. Speak of the Devil, and it shall appear. You see a uh, horse. Oh, my goodness. A horse will <laughs> in Ulanov's hand, but no blue <laughs> card. Jensen says, all right, I'm going to put a Sneak Attack into play. Does he have, no, does he have a Lotus Petal? No? Yes. Okay. All right, well. He may be sandbagging a volcanic island here. Okay. Or another land. So Ulanov draws a card, plays a polluted delta. Does He's he have his Crozan grip, for example? Would be I excellent think he does there. have Crozan in his grip in his hand. You see Deathrite Shamans both in play. Ulanov going to draw a card. Or excuse me, sacrifice a land and get a land out of his deck. And this is what I was speaking of in the, during the sideboarding is often sneak attacks involved without the red mana. So enchant removal is is better than it would appear on the surface. Uh, certainly a split second chant removal as well. 
yeah. really, really good. So Lunov going to shuffle and present his deck, and if he does have that Crows and Griffin in his hand, he's uh he's dealt with the problem. Yes. And this isn't even to say that Huey even has a uh, has a big monster in his hand because he could have just put it in play. I think there's a pretty big risk in just exposing that that permanent like that without red mana or and uh, a creature in play. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's uh, I suppose it's true. There's some incentive to get it out there, but there's Crows and Griffin. See you later. Yeah, Huey says, man, that's just a one of the sideboard. Mm -hmm. But got there. And, yeah, get in there too, Death Right Shaman. So, Jensen moves down to 17. Huey draws a card. There is the Scalding Turn. Pass the turn back. So, Lunov sitting pretty good right now. The one of Crows and Griffin in the sideboard for a reason. You see that he uh, t does have multiple sinkholes in his hand too. So, things could get pretty ugly here. Yeah, he decided to bring in sinkhole, which I'm not a huge fan of. Although, uh, again, the, the sneak attack deck definitely needs to get a bunch of mana in play. And the... Red mana situation is especially sensitive, so. Mm -hmm. Sinkhole's not shabby here. Sinkhole, the fun police. Destroy any one land. Any, any one, one of one. them. Yep. You choose it. It destroys. Target land in play must be discarded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deathrite Shaman into the red zone. Get across for two. As Jensen just stuck on one land now, he moved in with Show and Tell. There is a Volcanic Island, but it did not work out. As Ulanov draws his card, Delver of Secrets is the draw. And those sinkholes are actually going to fuel Deathrite Shaman. It's a combo. It is a combo deck. <laughs> combo back online. Sinkhole number two. That uh, destroys any one land as well. Force of Will says, I don't think so. Is Ulanov going to force back? I think it's worth it. Force remove a Delver. Get that land out of here. Make my death right shamans even better. Can remove his lands and play Tarmogoyf and get clock The race is on, yeah. He has two black sources of mana to start draining with Death Right Shaman. Mm -hmm. I mean this is a pretty fast clock that Ulan has put on the table. Yeah. Yeah, I would want to get that out there. Yeah, so remove your lands. Thank you very much. Get my Tarmogoyf in play. We'll get the Tarmogoyf die out there to see exactly how big that thing is. Jensen's going to sacrifice his Scalding Tarn and go down to 13. But as you mentioned, Patrick, the uh, the heat is on. Yes. Although I think Jensen might actually have City Trader show and tell Emrakul as his last cards in hand. So. Yeah. When we see the Tarmogoyf, you got an instant. <laughs> oh, come on. Jesus. <laughs> Good Lord. All right. Well, uh, Ulanov still has Diabolic Edict in his deck. He's a... Uh, it's uh, not, <laughs> he's not dead yet, but he's under the gun. Actual speechless. <laughs> That's pretty hard to do. Draw a card. What do we have here? That's a ponder. Okay, okay. so Diabolic Egg is still alive. Him. <laughs> Goif. <laughs> shuffle. <laughs> Quick shuffle. Listen, Watching Jensen this weekend, I can understand why he finds this deck so charming. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> I'm getting sinkled into the ground. Oh, okay, just uh, yeah, sure. play City of Traders. Get yep. this, uh, get this city, get this Emrakul out there. Put a sneak attack into play. It gets, it gets with Force of Will back up. It gets Singleton Crozan gripped. You know, get Stone Rain twice. You know, all this pressure and you know, no big deal. Cause yeah, it's just Emrakul. Yeah, it's better than all your cards in play at once. Yeah. So. Goodness gracious. All right. One card coming. Are we giving it a good log shuffle? <laughs> Off the top. What are you? Probably not Diabolic Edict. I think it would have been Castle. For some reason, I think it's another Ponder. I want it to be another Ponder. Yeah, that's... You see Dennis counting his points. Yeah, huh? that's going to do it. So, Huey Jensen, after you mentioned... <laughs> <laughs> Crows and Grip your sneak attack. Okay. Sinkhole your Ancient Tomb. Okay. Sinkhole your land. Okay. I will cast Show and Tell when I'm going to play. And Dennis says, uh, okay. 